Welcome to Picks with the Professor, the podcast where a real statistics professor and his friend Jake gives you sports betting tips. I am Professor Sides. You can follow me and find all of my picks on Twitter at Professor Sides. Today is Saturday, January 29th, 2022, and this episode covers today's best college basketball bets. Uh, Jake, it's Saturday. We aren't supposed to be here. What are we doing here? <laughs> I don't know. I guess this Big 12 AC, <laughs> SEC challenge got us excited. I, I don't know. Exactly, exactly. We, you know, we normally do Monday through Friday, but wanted to drop in here on Saturday. There are so many good games to talk about. Uh, we're going to focus on the afternoon contest today. None of the early games, just in case you aren't able to listen to this earlier in the day. Uh, but we're going to see how this goes. If you all like the Saturday podcast, drop a comment. Uh, let us know. Give us the feedback on Twitter. Let us know if you if you like the the extra Saturday podcast and if uh, we should keep doing it going forward. But in case you're new here, I've built a mathematical model that predicts what the spread and total should be for every Division I college basketball game. That information, along with a graded A, B, or C pick for each of today's games, is available in the Google Sheet that is linked in the show's description. Each of today's over 100 games. There are so many of them. Picks that get an A are the ones I love. Picks that get a B are the ones I like. Picks that get a C are the leans. However, please remember that good and bad variants will occur. So as much as I'd like to say the model will be profitable each and every day, that is an impossible reality for any gambler. Jake, the model keeps rolling. Um, yeah. Yesterday, I overall... Another profitable day. Yeah, it's been hot. It's yeah, been the, hot here recently. Like it's that's a good thing to have. It has, it has, and I want to do a, a deeper dive on this. Uh, do a little tw a Twitter thread, uh, but just the gist of it. You know, I saw the same thing last year with the model. When COVID strikes, the model really struggles. It's like there's just too many changes at one time, and it can't figure out to to do dodge, dip, or dive. You know what I mean? And uh, <laughs> early on in the season, when COVID wasn't a factor, the model did great. Now that we're kind of a little bit through this this wave, you know. Hopefully, on the other side of it, you obviously never know what the way the last couple of years have gone. But right now, where it's not a factor, the model's doing great again. Um, that little that the COVID stretch, it really just it struggled this year, which is unfortunate. But yeah, we're back rolling again. Yesterday, your exclusive pod content went five one and one between the picks that Jake and I gave out here on the pod. So that was fantastic. Ohio went just as we predicted. Uh, that was a, easier than we could have ever imagined. Dayton and Wyoming, they both won. They couldn't cover for us. Uh, I, I joked that Colorado State and UNLV might be 90 to 70, and that wasn't far off. There were a ton of <laughs> really? points. But the, score, really? but the score got flipped. Uh, that was yeah. a little bit yeah. surprising that UNLV won and won that easily. And then in that late game, both you and I took our took our own advice. We did go to bed. Yeah. Uh, but apparently Boise tied it up on a late three. Fresno had that game apparently and then couldn't get it done for us. Uh, Boise keeps their winning streak alive with an overtime victory in what sounds like a, a, a moderately fun low-scoring game if you stayed up for yeah. it. Like we said, it was a, it was a good game, but and tight. And just not fun, not, uh, fun not, on the watch for the offense. Not as – yeah, not aesthetically pleasing, right? <laughs> Those type of things. Um, we're going to move on to today's slate. We're only going to cover games that start at 3 Central. That's 4 Eastern or later. And there are a ton of them. We've got seven games for you uh, here that we're going to break down. Plus your exclusive pod content, those buzzer beaters. We're still going to get those to you at the end of the show. So stay tuned. We're probably going to go a little long today. There's just so much to cover. We're going to start off with a heavyweight fight here, 3 p.m. Central. My Baylor Bears at Alabama. Look, we talked about this earlier in the week that these Alabama totals are just way too high. I think the model is even still too high. The model thinks it should be under 145. So it's a B pick for me under 150.5. I think that total is way too high. I feel like one 145 makes a lot more sense than 150.5. Uh, Jake, what's your play on this one? I, I'm, I'm on Baylor. I think the total is way too high, so I'd play the under also. Like, Alabama's still getting too much respect for the style they're playing and things like that versus <clears throat> like how they're actually playing. Like this style and how Nate Oates is coaching it is not going well with this team. They're not shooting well. They're uh, shooting like 26 and a half percent in my last uh, three games from three. Well, at the same time shooting almost 33s a game. So that's, you're not going to get the points unless they start falling. It's a ridiculous rate. Uh, Javon Quinterly has been disappointing this year. They kind of put a lot on him and Shackleford, and Quinterly's just not been there, especially late. And like with the, how fast they play, and they're they have to win the turnover battle. And right now they're playing even, yes. forcing 13 and giving up 13. So it's just not going to go well, especially against a really 
really good guard loaded Baylor Bears team. Like this is just an incredible team. Even without Akinjo, if he doesn't play, I know he's listed as questionable. I haven't seen one way or the other. They they should be able to handle this Alabama team, like just from a defensive standpoint. Um, but like in the fact that uh, Mayer's getting better and you've got LJ Cryer playing well and everything like that, it's it's Baylor's the play and probably under at one fifty. Yeah, I, I agree with everything you said there. I'm thinking about the ways that Bama wins and or it goes over, and it's it's not impossible. It's just there's there's a lot of things that have to go right for them, right? Bama A has to be able to speed up the Baylor guards and get them to turn it over. I'm not sure how successful they're going to be given Baylor's guard play. If they do, they're then also going to have to hit their shots. They're going to have to get those points off the turnovers. They're going to have to hit the transition threes, and they just haven't been doing it. So it's kind of one of those, for Bama to win and or it go over, they're going to have to have a couple of combination of things that I kind of think maybe they can do one or two or three, but I, I, I see it hard. I see it being difficult for them to do all three um, here, but it should be a great game. Alabama being at home, that gym should be rocking, and that gives them at least a puncher's chance, as opposed to this game was in Waco, where we would say that Baylor should be a, a runaway favorite. But also at 3 p.m. Central, a little bit of an under-the-radar game, North Texas at Louisiana Tech. This is one that if you've got a second screen, you may want to keep up. This is um, you know kind of fighting for who's going to win that conference title. I think it should be a fantastic context. Louisiana Tech is a short two and a half home favorite which means people think these two teams are pretty close to each other the model makes this total 128 and a half and so i'm going under 126 and a half um this one seems to me like uh, a, a a tight game where anything can happen jake i'm curious to hear what your take is here so i'm riding the Louisiana tech team at home and plus a slower, more deliberate pace for a North Texas team that turns the ball over quite a bit. It's uh, twenty, almost a little over 20% of their possessions are turnover. And then when they run that slow, deliberate pace, that's huge. That's, I mean, a good example of that is when Virginia turns the ball over, right? They, they just there's not they don't have enough possessions in the game to to win the game to win and cover. Uh, I guess this Louisiana Tech team who's very good defensively and has an all-star guard in Kenny, uh, in Kenneth Lofton Jr. That guy is he's fun to watch. He's incredible. Um, he averages a double-double with 17 and 10 in the game. Um, so as long as Colby Williams and Amori Archibald can get him the ball, I think they're going to be able to handle it. And especially when you have two decent guards that can get your good big guy the ball, you can end momentum, end a run stuff by just – isolating him on the side and letting him make a play. Like you can just slow the game down and get your offense going. So anytime you have that guy like Kenneth Lofton, it, it makes a really good bet for a short cover like this. Um, I mean, North Texas has been playing well recently, but I don't, yeah. I don't see them getting past this Louisiana Tech team who's been under the radar all year. Gotcha, gotcha. Sorry, I, I misspoke there. I, I mistyped in the document here. I'm taking over 126 and a half because, as I said, the model makes 128 and a half. Um, I do think this will be a uh, low scoring game, obviously, with that low of a total. But to me, the number is just a little bit too low. Um, being a tight game, you also have the opportunity for fouls at the end and or overtime to uh, get us over the number there. So, Jake, you like Louisiana Tech covering a short number. Um, I'm taking over 126 and a half. Kind of a loaded afternoon slate, like we talked about, 3.30 Central. We have Illinois at Northwestern. It's an A pick for me, Illinois minus three. Uh, the model makes Illinois minus five and a half. Look, I, this line makes no sense to me. I, 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 I've been kind of on Northwestern a little bit here, kind of trusting the numbers, but at some point you have to, they have to shift. They have to adjust for the fact that this Northwestern team just continues to disappoint. Curbelo is likely out from what it sounds like. Um, it, it sounded earlier on, like right away, that it wasn't a COVID-related illness, but now he's in COVID protocols. So uh, it seems unlikely he's going to get cleared here at this last moment. Kofi, who knows, being in concussion protocols, that's probably – it's it's one of those things where, it, you know, it's a short trip up there. I, maybe he made the trip or not. We just haven't found out yet. Who really knows how that's playing out? Um, especially by the time you listen to this, maybe you'll know if Kofi's in or out. But, but they've got enough – depth to handle this Northwestern team that we we've said multiple times, like if Northwestern is going to do it, if Northwestern is going to make the tournament, this is the game they got to win. This is the game they got to win. I'd say yeah. it again. This is the game they got to win and they haven't done it. 
And I just don't see how they're able to handle an Illinois team, even if Kofi's out. Because when when Kofi went out, we, we've talked about this on pod. If you if you've listened to this before. That first game, they really struggled. They did not know what they were doing. Defensively, they looked lost. Offensively, they were stagnant. I mean, they were bad on both sides of the ball. But without him being able to practice a little bit, they have they have played much better in the games since that first one. This is just a complete mismatch to me. I, I don't understand it. And obviously, when I say that, I Northwestern might win the game. You know, so this is not. There's no locks right of anything. There's no guarantees, hundred percent. But it just feels like a situation where if they play this game ten times, Illinois gets an easy win, probably seven or eight of them. What do you think, Jake? I'm, I'm the same way, especially if Kofi uh, makes it back. Just then, for then sure, that realizes Northwestern's best player, Peter Lance, who leads them in yep. every stat known to man. Um, but even with that, even without him, like Trent Frazier is on an incredible run here. They're, he they're making an incredible amount of shots, and it's just unreal the, the run he is on. And this Illinois team really feeds off mistakes, and Northwestern just makes mistakes at the wrong times. So it's If you go back through all their games, they've lost so many tight games, two of them in overtimes, and only, and only one of their losses is by double digits. And they just make the wrong play at the wrong time, throw it out of bounds, dribble off somebody's shoes, you know, something a little unlucky. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But at the same time, like part of being lucky is being prepared for it. And they just haven't had it this year. They And like the last five games or so, they have been terrible on defense. They're, they're letting in almost 80 points a game. And that's going through the heat of the big 10 conference. And this is one of the better offensive teams in the big 10 conference. So I, I just don't know where the line came from in minus three unless somebody knows something that's not out there because it seems yeah. like Illinois should win this by like a nine to ten, I would think. Yeah. Yeah, I, I was going to say, it, to me, this line should be six or seven. And if it's at that point, it makes me like really struggle with like, ah, oh, do you take Northwestern? The numbers say take them, but, oh, you know, that six or seven line makes a lot of sense. And then at that point, it's a, like I said, it's the debate we've been having with Northwest, Northwestern. Do you just continue to fade them or not? With the way Northwestern plays, this feels like, like you said, a game where they just do something stupid at the end and then some fouls and they lose by, you know, six, seven, eight, whatever. Um, it just, it, 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 not to run this point to the ground, of course, but we always talk about with both basketball and football, right? With these programs making transitions, trying to become better, right? You you start off, you lose big, then you got to learn how to lose small, then you got to learn how to win small, then you got to learn how to win big. Northwestern is firmly in that. They know how to lose small, right? Which is why yeah. this number at three doesn't make any sense uh, to me. Like I said, it should be a little higher. And then again, can they lose small again or the fouls happen, whatever, at the end of the game kind of madness. But Three just makes no sense to me, especially, like you said, if Kofi's in, that should be an easy win for Illinois. Moving on, we have 5 p.m. Central, Virginia at Notre Dame. I think this one is one that you just don't need to overthink too much. Notre Dame got us to the window last time. They're playing well. The model makes this Notre Dame minus four, so it's a B pick for me on Notre Dame minus three. Jake, what do you got for me? Notre Dame's playing well. They're playing better. Virginia's having a very underwhelming season. Um so uh, Notre Dame's the play here, and it's just like adding Paul Atkinson Jr. has done a lot for this Notre Dame team offensively. So yep. the, with him getting rolling now, Notre Dame's the play. Yep, I agree. I can't. I can't see any reason to get off this train. Uh, like you said, Virginia being very underwhelming. Um, we're so used to them being a, a powerhouse team, and they just haven't done it yet this year. Notre Dame started off the season looking. Um, pretty shaky, but has just been playing overall a whole lot better here at the last month, month and a half. So yeah, let's not overthink it. Let's just lay the short number with Notre Dame, get us to the window again. Also at 5 p.m., the game of the day, Kentucky at Kansas. This is the heavyweight fight here uh, that we've been waiting for all week. The model thinks that Kansas should only be favored by three and a half. So I have a B pick on Kentucky plus five. Jake, my take on this game is Anything can happen, and I wouldn't be surprised. Both of these teams can score and score in a hurry. If either team can get a run of stops, we could see a lot of runs in this game. I think anything can happen, which to me says, why is Kentucky getting five points? Because if anything can happen, you could obviously have a blowout either way, but you obviously can have a really close game that comes down to the wire. And those having those five points in your back pocket, I think is the way you want to be just in a long run sense of, who knows what's going to happen? Why am I getting so many points? Uh, Jake, what's your opinion? 
The, the only reason I can come up with for the five is the health of Kentucky. They've got three or four guys, and Ty Ty being the key among them, um, that are questionable for today's game. But I really think I really like Kentucky. They're a better team, especially if everybody's healthy. And I think even without them, like we saw Kansas struggle with the Texas Tech team, who's not loaded offensively. Um, and McCormick is not – McCormick and Lightfoot are not great together. They're not great individually. So the Oscar Sheway matchup is terrible for them because he, he can step out and shoot a little bit, and he hits his free throws, so you can't really out-physical him. And the way he rebounds is just insane. Uh, but I really think with great if Grady gets hitting, and it's just a bad matchup for Kansas because Abaji is an incredible player, but – He's a tall, long guard, which is what Kentucky is loaded with, with between right. Grady and Mills and all of that. It's I just, I'm not sure, other than the health, why they're getting five. I would think this would have been a Kansas two, two and a half, something like that. So Kentucky yep. should be the play here. Yep, and like I said, with the model making this Kansas minus three and a half, that is – understanding the injury status of Kentucky. I'm like you, if Kentucky's fully healthy, then all of a sudden now it should be Kansas minus one and a half, maybe something like yeah. that. Of course they aren't fully healthy. And even if those guys play just as a reminder for you listening to this, if those guys play, um, you know, Ty Ty plays today, he, he's probably not a hundred percent. He's probably only 80%, 90%, something like that. Right. So he's not, you still have to ding them a little bit. You can't just say, Oh, he's in, he's a hundred percent having not played, but he's still, if he can get to 80%, 90%, he's still going to make a difference. I assume if Kansas gets a favorable injury report, maybe that number comes down a little bit. Um, again, money line, not a bad look there, just because again, anything can happen. Obviously, you know that you're less than 50% likely to win the game, but at such big plus odds in the long run, that can be a smart play uh, for that one. 7 p.m. Central, Wake Forest at Syracuse. I've got this as a wrong team favored game. I've got the model thinking Wake Forest should be a one and a half point favorite, not Syracuse. So I'm going to take that one and a half points, put it in my back pocket as a B pick. The money line, obviously a solid look too. You're not going to get great odds there. But of note, uh, the model is six and three on A or B picks on Wake Forest this year. I think they've been undervalued all year. Syracuse is a very inconsistent team. And so I just like the, the team that for the most part is under the radar, solidly good in Wake Forest. I think that's the side you want to be on. And as difficult as it is to play at Syracuse, I just think Wake's a better team by a decent amount. Jake, what's your take? Yeah, I'm, I, I like this Wake Forest team. They're really good. And Alondis Williams is one of the best players I've seen play in a long time. He just, it does, everybody knows that he's the guy for Wake. Like everybody, every, it's the scouting report is we got to make him, and he's still going for 20, 25 a game. Like it's it's nuts what he's able to do, and the way with how Syracuse plays with this zone, I'm not sure that that's a great way to uh, knock him out, right? Because Alonzo shoots very very well, so yep. the zone may work against Bayheim in this uh, kind of scenario, but. This has been a rough go of it for the Bayhawk family here recently. They, like both of, both his sons have been shooting not very well, and then they're losing games, so it's not helping helping yeah. Jim out. But you know, this is the Syracuse team is very inconsistent, but they live and die by the three. So if but if Buddy's hitting, they look a lot better. But they don't have that. Typically, the good Syracuse teams have a like a Carmelo Anthony or like. A, I can't remember some of the names, but like a slasher kind of guard that they can go to when the threes aren't going, and they right. just don't have that kind of guy this year. Yep. Yep, and that's definitely hurts their consistency. Uh, it'll be an interesting, you know, uh, cat and mouse type matchup there with that zone. Do they stick with it if, uh, you know, Wake can get hot? Uh, does the do they stick with it, but just kind of push the pressure out a little bit further? That might open up some lanes in the middle. You know, do you, do they ever try to get out of that and go with like a box and one type thing to really put a guy? I mean, it, it, you can't. It, it'll be interesting to see. Like, did did they just let the one guy shoot him out of the building, right? If he can. <laughs> 
or how do they make the adjustments to that? So it'll be a real interesting one to see, you know, the X's and O's uh, for that game. Um, and a late game that I think you're really going to want to pay attention to here, 8 p.m. Central, Grand Canyon at New Mexico State. I think this is a similar kind of heavyweight matchup here uh, for the WAC Conference. The model thinks that New Mexico State should only be a two-and-a-half-point favorite, though. So I've got an A pick on Grand Canyon plus five. Um this is a lower total. You've got um, a good likelihood that this is, you know, uh, the big matchup for conference play. Possessions matter, right? What does that mean? That means that those five points are extremely valuable. So I love Grand Canyon getting the five here because I assume this is going to be a tight game. And as long as fouls don't get away from us, somebody should win this game by about three points one way or the other. Uh, so getting five with Grand Canyon, I think, is the right side here. Jake, what's your opinion? Yeah, I'm, I'm all over this Grand Canyon team. They have been playing uh, very well all year. The last two games have been a struggle with the scoring under, I think it was a 48 and 56 in the last two. But uh, they've got a guy that who's just so much fun to watch in Lofton Jr. He's just a, he, like as a team they've been struggling, but he has it. He's still up there at 18, 19 points a game, even with the, them scoring that. So if they can get some of these other guys going that give him a little bit of help, this New Mexico State team doesn't have enough to keep to keep them at like a six or six or more lead. Like it's they're good defensively. There's just not enough offense for this New Mexico State team to have it. So I really like this Grand Canyon team. I think they break out of their slump and and probably and keep this within two ish, maybe even win the game. Yeah, it's kind of like we talked about with that Kansas uh, Kentucky game. I think it, I think it profiles pretty similar, with the exception of better defense lower scoring that sort of thing but just in general of the kind of anything can happen here it should be tight late uh money line again not a not a bad look even though green canyon more likely to lose than win you're getting great odds that's going to make that um a valuable play because it should it should come down to the end and be a tight one i think um and again what should be a good game to kind of round out um the slate today Got some buzzer beaters for you still, your exclusive pod content. I'm going to highlight some of my favorite plays of the day. The total of the day, I'm going with a late one, 9 p.m. Santa Clara at San Francisco. Should be a fantastic game. I'm taking 151 under. I think that's too many points here in a game that all we need is any part of that game, whether it's early or late, for these teams to start um, you know, turtling a little bit offensively, realizing it's a tight game, saying this game matters for conference standings. Um, slowing things down a little bit, being more careful with the ball, just one four minute stretch to slow us down. And this game's going to have a hard time getting over that number. So 151 under is the play there for my total of the day. The A plus pick of the day, I'm going with an afternoon game, 3 p.m. Central Time, UC Davis, minus one and a half versus Long Beach State. I talk about this every once in a while on pod. This is a classic game where there's over 100 games in the slate today. The books cannot make a great line for every one of them. They really rely heavily on Ken Palm numbers. Great numbers on the whole, but every once in a while, there's just some misses. There can't not be. It's not possible for Ken Palm to nail every line when there's so many teams. The models can't be perfect. And this is one of those to me that screams. They just kind of hung the number around what Ken Palm says. But UC Davis, I think, is a better team than Long Beach State at home. I like them to get an easy win here. That's my A-plus pick of the day. The best B said, I'm going for a late game, 9 p.m. at UC San Diego, just to win, right? They're, they're, they're to pick them, to beat Cal State Bakersfield. I think it's kind of the similar thing that I just mentioned. It's kind of the light version of that. I think UC San Diego, just a better team. Um, and I think the book just have too many games to really focus on to make a good line there. Every dog has its day. I'm taking another late one here, 9 p.m. Cal Baptist, plus 120. That's an A pick to beat SFA. Look, I think SFA has had some really good teams, but they're not that same team they used to be. People are giving them too much respect. They've already lost eight times this season. Um, SFA isn't bad, but Cal Baptist isn't either, so I love the short home dog there. And then my last buzzer beater, the plug your nose and play game. I'm giving you another late one. So in case you're listening to this pod later in the day, got a lot of good late picks for you here, 9 p.m. Central. Sacramento State plus... 10 that's a b pick versus weber state sacramento state not very good but at home hopefully can keep this close and not get run out of their own building have a little pride there right um and and keep that one tight jake what are your buzzer beaters so i, I love this texas tech team it's one of my favorite teams out there right now and i i don't think 
Mississippi State has enough to get offense to get this done. It's going to be two really good defenses going at it, but Texas Tech is really figuring something out. And as they bring back Shannon Jr. and McCullers get back into the field, and then Williams has been out of his mind here recently. So I don't think Mississippi State has enough offense. Um, I love the South Alabama team. It's one of my favorite teams to bet on the ride right now. They just beat the same Troy team on Thursday by 14. So I don't think going on the road in three days changes that much. And so I think they cover the two and a half fairly easy. And as you can see, I've got my Tennessee stuff on. But to, I think Tennessee plus points right now is the way to go. I think I don't think Texas offense is enough to get. I think Texas wins the game. Because Tennessee doesn't play that well on the road this year, but I think Texas doesn't have enough offense to get it outside that number. I think it stays mm-hmm. close in a very good defensive game. And I'm gonna sneak one more in here. I'm gonna take Duke early. If you can get this early, get it. Because all right, this whole coaching situation going on in Louisville is crazy, and Duke is the more talented team. So take them. All right. All right. Um, that is all we've got for you today. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Picks with the Professor. Uh, like I said earlier, please go ahead and drop a comment here. Tell us if you like the Saturday format here, um, if this is of value to you. I know Saturdays are a little bit different than during the week. So just let us know what you think about that. Remember, check out that Google Sheet. Got a pick in a total on all over the 130 whatever games there are today. Lots of picks out there. Lots of uh, analysis. Lots of other things you can check out in that Google Sheet. If you haven't done so yet, click that subscribe button. Again, we'll get you a new episode every weekday of the college basketball season and maybe Saturdays. We'll see how it goes, right? Uh, Either way, we will be off tomorrow, but we will see you Monday. Until then, remember, you can eat your betting money, but please don't bet your eating money.